When I was growing up, my first real job was in a print shop. And it was like right after high school, my shop teacher, who was this really cool guy, he offered me a job in the print shop that was adjacent to the high school, like literally the day after graduation. So I really didn't have to worry. And um, I probably worked there for like seven years. And it was a great job, you know, great group of guys, very, very easygoing. You learn a lot. And um, there was a wide group, or I mean a wide range of ages in that group and personalities. And it was cool that like we all kind of, um, every day we would take turns on the radio. And it was like we all got an hour apiece. And you weren't allowed to complain about whatever anyone else had on. You just had to deal with it. And so since this was the 90s, you know, if someone wanted to play Green Day for the hour, then that's what they did. And you couldn't bitch about it. And then one of the older guys would get on and he would play Neil Young for an hour. And you couldn't bitch about that. You know, the Green Day kid couldn't bitch about the old guy stuff. And that's the way it was supposed to work. And for my hour turn, I always played Howard Stern. <laughs> and that was purely to gaslight the rest of the crew. I didn't have that word then, but it was purely to goose them, you know, because they didn't like it. And they're just like, oh, Howard, oh, God, this asshole, this piece of shit. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, I know, ha, ha, ha. And um, I was always lucky enough that he would have someone from the WAC pack on during my hour, right? Meaning one of the mentally handicapped people uh, that he would have on the show in order to exploit them and their mental illness and so that, for a laugh. And um, I remember thinking at the time that I appreciated how Howard was obviously trying to offend normies. That's what I thought, anyway. Like, I looked at the older guys in the back of the shop, and one of them was a friend of my dad's, and you're just looking at him, looking at me, shaking his head like, I thought you were a good kid. <laughs> you know? That's why you do it. But at the end of the day, I thought it was just a shtick. You know, I didn't think that Howard was actually that big of an asshole. I'm like, there's no way that he's not genuinely taking care of the whack pack. There's no way. They're almost like his stable, you know what I mean? And um, I remember at the time, there was certainly nothing else about his show that I found entertaining. You know, I mean, how many whores can you see let them, uh, let Howard touch their breasts? It was like, it was pretty much the whole show. Howard fans have to admit that. That if it wasn't him, like, asking whores exactly every minute detail of their last sexual encounter, then it was like exploiting mentally handicapped people because they sound funny on the radio. That's it. That was his whole show. And occasionally you would get this good blend of things where you'd have someone like Wood Yi who had a funny sounding voice, but he wasn't really like mentally handicapped. I didn't feel like he was being exploited. He was genuinely funny. He just had a funny sounding voice. And so Howard would put him in skits where he sounds like Woody Allen. And he'd be like, oh God, oh soon ye, oh I need to dump my evil seed. <laughs> and you'd laugh. But now, um, I'm reminiscing about all of this with my friend from the print shop that, you know, I, one of my best friends, I still talk to him a lot. And we're hanging out and we're watching YouTube. And he's like, hey, remember Howard? Remember the Whack Pack? Remember the print shop? Remember? And I'm like, yeah, yeah, of course, of course. And so he's searching YouTube by name in the Whack Pack. And he's like, oh, Gary the Retard, Beetlejuice, whatever. And he gets to John the Stutterer. We find like this hour-long video. And we're watching it. And it turns out it's not very funny. There's not, you know, it's mostly John looks like he's on the verge of tears because he says that he's not getting paid for doing an hour-long show on Sirius XM, you know, called, like, John's Thoughts, or whatever the fuck it was called, I don't know. And so that meant that John the Stutterer had an hour-long show on Sirius that Howard asked him to do that he was not being compensated for. 
And so John comes in and says, well, you've got other people doing shows for you for an hour, like Riley Martin, I think, had a show at that time. And he was like, you pay them. Why don't you pay me? And what does Howard keep telling him? He keeps going, oh, don't worry about them. Why not? He's talking about fair compensation. He's comparing himself to his coworkers. And Howard's like, oh, don't worry about that guy. <laughs> and John the Stutterer is like, well, this guy has an hour-long show. You know, he has, his ratings are worse than mine. So I'm wondering why I'm not compensated and he is. Get to it. Why yeah. is he no longer... Well, I part? know why. Let me help okay. John out here for a second. But I, I want to work through this with him. You know, you used to have a radio show on here, and I thought for a guy who's pretty tortured in life, it was a fun thing for you. And the way I looked at it, and I know you were upset because we, you found out that Ralph was getting a salary for doing his show. Mm. But, you know, leaving Ralph out of it, and I can't explain no, to him. No, I'm not leaving him well, out. Well, I'll get to it. He can't, But, you know, for you, you're a guy who likes to call into the show. You love speaking to the listeners. The way I look at it is these shows... I don't care if they're on or not, but for you, I thought it would be fun because you get to speak for an hour without being interrupted by me. You got your thoughts out. You're a caller anyway, so I figured, hey, let John have his hour to say whatever he wants. It's never going to be a money-making proposition. I can't explain to you why Ralph gets paid. I, I don't even know the answer to that. Well, but my... I, I, don't pay Ralph either. Who cares? Well... And Howard just keeps going like, look... I offered you an hour to hawk your trinkets. That should be good enough. I shouldn't have to pay you to do it. What the fuck is he talking about? He's like saying, look, I offered you, I told you to work for free. If you don't want to do it, fuck off. And if Howard was being open about that, then I wouldn't have an issue and I wouldn't have made this video. But it was Howard's attitude towards John the Stutterer in that video where he's like, you know, you should be kissing my ass that I gave you that hour to hawk your shit. That's still work, Hymish. That's still work. It's still an hour-long radio show. It's still work. And I love how Howard keeps saying, like, that's not work. You're right, Howard. What you do is not work and has never been work. You have been jacking off on the radio for 30 fucking years. You don't work. You show up late, you sit down, and you go like, Hey, whores, what's up? Well, how'd you fuck last night? That's not a job. You don't work either. You work just as hard as John the Stutterer and Riley Martin. If anything, you don't work as hard as they do. You show up, what, three days a week now with the Bill Maher work ethic? Yeah, I just show up whenever I fucking feel like it and yak about whatever I feel like it, then I take off. That's not a job. That's barely YouTube. It's... <laughs> And really, how long has it been since Howard was the king of all media? Can anyone even remember? It was a self-appointed title in the first place, I know. But it, has Howard been popular in the last 10, 20 years? If he was, I doubt he'd have to supplement his income on American Idol sitting in Simon Cowell's old seat. Right? More fake work. More sitting in a lawn chair going like, yeah, she looks good. Yeah. No, she looks good. Yeah, she sounds good. Yeah, she looks good. That's not a fucking job. Stop saying that John the Stutterer should work the for, for free and you shouldn't. Like you work any harder than the whack pack. 